Innistrad double features out, and I've got an Arlen Cord deck tech for you. Let's go ahead and let's get on into the fun. It's going to be a howling good time. New way I'm going to be doing deck techs moving forward, probably, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Our Oathbreaker this time is Arlen the Pax Hope. She's a daybound and nightbound planeswalker that's going to do a lot for our werewolf deck, and she goes through a lot over the course of the story on Innistrad this time. If we plus one her, she's going to let us cast creature spells at instant speed, and they enter battlefield with a 1-1 counter on them. If we minus three her, she makes us some wolf tokens, two of them to be precise. You're going to see that is something commonly that comes up in this deck tech pretty frequently. If we transform her or it becomes night for any reason, we can plus two her to generate some mana and ramp us a bit. Or if we zero her, she becomes a 5-5 five, five trample indestructible haste. This is an ability we usually see on Gideon Planeswalkers. Uh, our signature spell this time is Dire Strain Rampage. For one, a red and a green, we get to destroy one of any three types of a permanent artifact enchantment or land. When we do, we actually replace it with a land. Unless, of course, we destroy a land, then it works more like a Haro. Um, I asked the creator of the deck why he chose this as his signature spell, and he actually chose it because he likes the political aspect that this card can bring you or can bring to the table. You can destroy, you know, a problematic permanent and save the whole table from whoever is the Nico Bolas of the game, or you can help somebody ramp by destroying a permanent they don't want anymore. So if they need one land and they're willing to give up something they're not using or a land just to help them get back into the game, it could be used that way as well. So it's something to think about that this can be a deal-making card for its cost. Next, we have Ascendant Pack Leader. It's a one-cost uh, wolf, and you're going to see quite a few wolves in this deck. When it enters the battlefield, it gets a, an extra plus one, plus one. If we control a permanent mana value 4 greater, since our commander is mana value 4, this is not impossible. Whenever we cast a spell mana value 4 greater, we can put a 1-1 counter on it. Uh, as I said just about two seconds ago, if people are going to remove our commander often enough, we're going to be able to trigger this. But there are other things in the deck that are mana value 4 later that we will get into. Next, we have... Give me just a second. This does this sometimes. Okay, good. Next, we have Bird Admirer for two in a green. It's a human werewolf with reach on its daybound side. On its nightbound side, it becomes a 3-5, so it doesn't have a huge change. After that, we have Sedimentary Prowler. It's a one in two green. It's a 3-4 with Vigilance, which makes it a good attacker and blocker. Notice quite a few creatures have big defenses, especially when they're flipped. This is actually going to help us play around a little bit of the red damage removal. Uh, when it enters the battlefield or attacks, we can exile a card from a graveyard. This is just a good way to hold down graveyard strategies. Any spell we have that matches cards removed with Sedimentary Prowler is going to cost one less to cast, so it's going to be good for our enchantments and our creatures that we'll get into later in the deck tech. Next we have next we have Flame Fang Blade Firebrand for three in a red. It's a human werewolf. If we pay one in a red, we can pump its uh, power by one and give it first strike till end of turn. It's a pretty good card just on its own, but when it transforms, it becomes a four five and gains a new ability where we can pay four in a red and have all of our creatures get plus two plus O. Oh. So that's pretty cool. After that, we have Harvest Tide Infiltrator for two in a red. It's a three, two with trample. Uh, when it transforms, I believe it just becomes a four, four. So not another, a lot of other big changes there. Then we have Hollow Hinge Overlord for four and two green. It's a wolf with flash that can be important, but when we play it at the beginning of our upkeep for each creature we control that's a wolf or a werewolf, we create a 2-2 wolf creature token. So this can cause our board to explode since it is essentially doubling all the creatures we have in play. Very cool. 
After that, we have Hound Tamer. For two and a green, it is a 3-3 three, three with Trample that we can pay three and a green to put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. But it is important to note that we can grow any member of our army, so if we need to diversify our threats and make any creature more dangerous, this will help us do it. Again, it can also help us get around damage-based uh, removal spells. On the backside, it is Untamed Pup. It is a trample werewolf that gives all our other wolves and werewolves trample, and it still has that 1-1 counter ability. And we'll have a couple lords in the deck like this, that when they transform, they give their abilities, or they just make our wolves and werewolves better. So keep an eye out for that. Next, we have Hollow Pack Piper. He's a human werewolf for three and a green, a 2-2 two, two that can't be countered. If we pay one and a green, we can tap him to take a creature from our hand and put it onto the battlefield. If it's a wolf or werewolf, we can untap it, and we can only do this as a sorcery. This can be um, amazing for us because with enough mana in a turn, we can just dump our whole hand onto the field for, for cheap and then get in for just a massive attack. I do wish we could use this ability as a sorcery, but beggars can't be choosers. On the back, he transforms into Wild Song Howler, a 4-4 creature werewolf. The one he enters the battlefield or transforms, we look at the top six cards of our library. We may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into our hand, and we put the rest on the bottom in a random order. This might sound counterintuitive, but this actually works very well with the front side ability. Every time uh, it transforms into Wild Song Howler, we get to put creatures in our hand that for one in a green we can just dump into play. So that's really awesome. Uh, next, we have Ill-Tempered Loner for 2 and 2 red. Whenever he is dealt damage, he deals that much damage to any target, and we pay 1 in red. We can pump him by plus 2 plus 0. Oh. When this 3-3 three, three transforms, he becomes a 4-4 four, four werewolf, and his ability says whenever a permanent you control is dealt damage, how a pack Avenger does that much damage to any target. So if they target Arlen Cord and do damage to her or any of our creatures we can actually knock players out of the game at a certain point depending on the damage. I've actually thought about talking to my friend since this card's in the deck and asking him if he'd be interested in running a uh, chain reaction because it does a number, it does an amount of damage equal to the number of creatures in play to all creatures and that could combo with this fairly nicely to actually maybe even knock players out of the game. And even, you know, Blasphemous Act might be very good with something like that. But since it is a one of in the deck and he's not running a lot of stuffy doll type creatures like this and Brash Taunter, I don't know if that's the best move. But it is it is an interesting uh, chain of thought I have there. Next, we have Immerwolf for one, a green and a red. It's a 2-2 two -two with Intimidate that gives all of our wolves and werewolves plus one plus one. And our non-human werewolves um, we control can't transform. This does actually work with the day and night bound mechanic, I believe. Uh, if that's not right, please correct me in the comments below. But that is wonderful because many of our wolves and werewolves are, uh, if they do have a transform mechanic, they are much better on the backside than they are on the front. Then next we have Kasik and Naturalist. When we attack with this 2-2, two, two, we get to generate a red or green mana that we'll have until the end of the turn. That can really help us ramp. Because this card is in the deck, I would suggest, um, and the backside of Arlen Cord is in the deck, it is important maybe to consider playing your spells in the second main phase to get the max benefit out of creatures like this. On the backside, it becomes Lord of Uvenwall. It gives our other wolves and werewolves that plus one, plus one. And then it says whenever it attacks, it gets us that same mana. So pretty good Oop. Um, then we have outland liberator for one in a green it is a human werewolf it's a 2-2 two -two. we can pay one mana to sacrifice to destroy an artifact or enchantment it's just good to have our removal like this on a creature when it transforms it transforms into it transforms into a 3-3 three -three. still has that same um, effect but also now has whenever it attacks, you destroy target artifact or enchantment. So that gives us a little bit more utility out of this creature. We'd much rather attack and destroy stuff than have to sacrifice an important creature. Then we have Pep's Pack Song Pup for one in a green. It's a 1-1 one, one that gets a 1-1 one, one counter at the beginning of combat as long as we control at least one other wolf or werewolf. So this can get out of control. When it dies, we gain life equal to its power. 
And then we have Realm Walker. It's a changeling. As it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type. We may look at the top card of our library at any time and may cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of our library. Since we're running more were werewolves than wolves, we're usually going to choose that. And this is just going to essentially act like free card draw or card advantage right off the top of our deck. Next, we have Reckless Stormseeker. For two and red, it's a 2-3 that at the beginning of combat on our, on our turn, it gives target creature plus one plus O oh, and haste. This card is just burning up the field in standard, and you can probably see why once you start playing with it, this can actually create some insane combat situations. On the back side, it becomes a 3-4, and instead of that ability just giving plus one plus O oh, and haste, it now gives trample as well, which is a pretty big upgrade. Tovalar's Huntmaster for four and two green. And when it enters the battlefield, we get to create two green wolf creature tokens. And it itself is a six six. When it transforms, it becomes a seven seven. And its ability now reads whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, we create two 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 green wolf creature tokens. Another good way to flood the board with those wolf tokens. If we pay two and two green, we can have one of our wolves or werewolves fight a creature we don't control. So that is another big removal piece for creatures that might get in our way in this stack. Um, next, we have Tovalar Dire Overlord for one, a red and a green. He's a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a werewolf we control deals combat damage to a player, we draw a card. We are enticed kind of with him on the board to attack multiple players. At the beginning of our upkeep, if we control three or more werewolves or wolves, uh, it becomes knight, and then we can transform any number of humans, uh, human werewolves we control. So this is a great way to make sure we're on the backside of our cards as often as possible, because that's where the better abilities tend to be. Um, the, his backside is Tovlar, the Midnight Scourge. Whenever Wolf or Werewolf we control deals combat damage to player, draw a card still. He also has this really great pump effect where if we spend X, a red and a green, we can now give a Wolf or Werewolf plus X plus O and trample till end of turn. This is a great way to get the last couple points of damage through and giving things trample in this deck once Tovlar is out is also card advantage because we're going to get to draw cards. Next, we have Village Watch for four and a red. It's a haste four three human werewolf. When it transforms, it becomes a five four that also gives all of our other werewolves haste. I would not scoff at that. It's funny how often just dropping a werewolf at the right time and being able to swing with it will actually very much help you stay in the game or get ahead. Next, we have Werewolf's Pack Leader for two green. It has pack tactics. Whenever it attacks, if you control creatures that are attacking with power six or greater, you draw a card. And then if we pay three and a green, it becomes a five three with trample that isn't human. Uh, that's the only way you can kind of transform this particular werewolf because it is out of the D&D &D set. It's not bad. It's really more in here than anything else because of that small amount of card advantage. Next, we have Pax Betrayal for two and a red. We gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature and it gains haste till end of turn. If we control a wolf or werewolf when we do that, we also get the scry two. So this is wonderful for us because we're pretty much always going to control one of those two permanents. So controlling the top of our deck will help set us up for future turns. This card can be used to remove a big creature or blocker um, from an opponent's board right before we attack. And then it also gives us something that we can either, you know, sacrifice if we're forced to or just swing out at somebody else and do a lot of damage with. So if someone builds a really big creature we have trouble getting around, why not use it for a turn? Next, we have Retrieve. We return up to one target creature card and up to one target non-creature permanent card from our graveyard to our hand, and then we exile this. Probably the best trick for this is getting back any of our big enchantments that pump our creatures, or if we want to save on Arling Cord's cost at least once, we can actually choose to put her in the graveyard. There's a lot of value creatures, so those are some things to think about when playing Retrieve. Shamanic Revelation is another big draw card for us. It's going to let us draw a card for each creature we control, and then we gain four life for each creature we control with power four or greater. Next up, we have a Storm the Festival. We look at the top five cards of our library, and we may put up the two permanent cards with mana value five or less from among them onto the battlefield. We put the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order, and we can flash it back to do that effect a second time. Visions of Ruin for three and a red forces each opponent to sacrifice an artifact. For each artifact sacrifice this way, you create a treasure token, and it also has flashback. 
Uh, the spell cost X less to cast, where X is the greatest manu mana value amongst commanders you own on the battlefield or in the command zone. So it costs three in red the first time. It's going to cost us about four in red and two red the second time, which is still pretty good. Um, Court of Calling for X and three green has Convoke. We search our library for a creature card, mana value extra less, and put onto the battlefield. We're usually going to look for, like, I would say Emerwolf, Tovalar, or um, the Werewolf that creates a token, a 2-2 two -two wolf token for each one we control. We're going to look for one of these big value creatures that does something entering the, the battlefield. Essentially, this is a toolbox card. Our one werewolf that's going to let us pay one to sack it to destroy an artifact or enchantment, being able to just go and get it is very good. So this tutors a lot of answers and, and fun shenanigans out of the deck for us. Next, we have Coloss Will for X, uh, two red in a green. We can choose to either have a deal X damage to each creature without flying or destroy up to X artifacts or enchantments. If we control our commander when we cast it, we can do both of those things. The first ability really helps clear the board to allow us to get our attacks in on whatever creature we're going after. Uh, this will work with that werewolf I mentioned earlier that when it's when your permanents are dealt damage, that much damage is dealt to any target. So it does have a little bit of utility in that aspect. Lunar Frenzy for X and a red. Target creature gets plus X plus O and gains first strike and trample till end of turn. This works very similar to Tovalar's ability is just a great way to get those last couple points of damage. Belt of Giant Strength is going to give an equipped creature base power and toughness 10-10, and the cost to equip it is reduced by the current power of that creature. So depending on how many of our Anthem effect werewolves we have in play, this can actually be fairly affordable. It really is more of a late game card. Replication Ring for three colorless mana can be tapped for one mana of any color. It does help us ramp and get our commander and other cards out in the late game. At the beginning of the upkeep, we also get to put night counters on it. When it has eight or more night counters, we basically sacrifice this and we get eight copies of it. Druid Class, every time we play a land, we'll gain one life on just it coming into play. We pay two and a green to level it up. We can play an additional land on each of our turns, and if we pay four and a green, a land we control becomes a creature with power and toughness each equal to the number of lands we control. Howling Moon at the beginning of our turn, target with wolf or werewolf we control gets plus two plus two until end of turn, which should be very important with some of our trample or more evasive werewolves. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, we get two, uh, we, I'm sorry, we create a two, two wolf creature token. Indominable Might has Flash. It gives a creature plus three, plus three, and the Enchanted Creature's controller may have it assigned combat damage as though it weren't blocked. So this is be a better than Trample effect, and again, helps us, you know, just close out an opponent's game. Ranger Class, when it enters the battlefield, we create a 2-2 Wolf. On level two, we put a 1-1 counter on one of our attacking creatures every time we would have an attack step. Level three, we get to look at the top card of our library at any time and cast creature spells from it. So this is very similar to Realm Walker's ability, but better. Rune of Might is going to let draw a card when it enters the battlefield and give a creature a plus one, plus one, and trample. A natural growth for one and two green in this deck. Every combat, ours and our opponents, we get to double the power and toughness of each creature we control. This can be a very oppressive card, so don't be surprised when your opponents remove it. Then for lands, we're running Command Tower. We're obviously going to be running some forests, Highland Forest, some mountains, Opal Palace, Path to Ancestry, of course, probably choosing... Let's see. So Path to Ancestry is a little tricky. I, I had to double read it real quick. When we add the one man of any color in our commander's color identity, but we also want to scry that one, it is best if we're on the back side of Arlen Cord and that we've made her a werewolf creature until the end of turn, and then we'll actually get that scry one. But a lot of the time, we're not going to actually get to make full use of path. Slagwood Bridge. And finally, Terramorphic Expands to fill out the end of the deck. So that is the deck. This was a deck I featured that my buddy Martin had made. I think it's it's pretty solid. 
Uh, depending on your meta, you might need to make some adjustments. It is uh, very interesting. It's not a bad starter deck, as in that werewolf decks can be pretty expensive. So this came in at a cost on TCG Player of $56.72. So um, certainly I will put a link to this in the description if you have any interest in playing or trying out this deck. I do put all of this stuff up on Moxfield now. I'd also like to thank the Moxfield software because it made it very easy for me to do the deck tech in this new style. So uh, up in the corner here, I have ways you can actually help and support the channel. But I think that's going to be it for the day. If you made it to the end, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I'll put another, you know, video up here on the end screen. And here are my patrons and my other YouTube subscribers. If you want to become part of this list, again, remember to subscribe. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you had a good day, and I hope to see you again real soon.